Howdy, Possum Patty here, and I'm nature journaling. It's April 21st. The skies were sunny this morning, but the clouds are coming in. There's a storm a brewing. So I need to take a quick walk before that happens. I'm starting here at the junction of reed, grass, sedge, tall fern by the clearing. I am just going to walk out in this direction. Well, that's not really a trail, maybe a deer path. I'm gonna try and squeeze in here. Wow, this summer sweet really makes a thick thicket. I don't see any skunk cabbage. Here's an interesting old log. You check that out. There's a pile of rocks here. Yeah, I took a little lichen from the log. And this is lichen grown on this rock. Get a little piece of that. So I have a log lichen and a rock lichen. Sanctum Sanctorum. I made this pile of sticks last year. There's so much downed wood, it's hard to walk around, I make little piles everywhere so I don't trip when I walk. There's no trails yet, oh I hear the wind picking up. to get inside before the storm. Getting dark too. Well, I probably need to get into the house, but I'm gonna take one of these mullen leaves with me. So my little, ad my outside adventure was cut short by wind and rain. Now I'm inside picking little sticks out of my hair. I quickly grabbed a few things while I was out there. Some awesome lichen from a log. Some lichen on a stone. One of my favorite fuzzy leaves from a mullen.
So what I'm going to do right now is do some sketching and do some zoomy microscope and start journaling. So when I was done playing with my zoomy microscope and looking at my lichens, the lichen from the stump and the lichen from the rock and my fuzzy mullein leaf, I sat down to do my journal page. The first thing I added was this quote from Henry David Thoreau. I find myself inspecting little granules, as it were, on the bark of trees, little shields, or apothecia, springing from a thallus. Such is the mood of my mind, and I call it studying lichen. So today I was in the mindset of Henry David Thoreau, studying my lichen. And this lichen, this is the apothecia. Okay, that part that comes up here, this is like a powder horn lichen, I'm not sure what kind, but the spores are made at the top, and the part on the bottom is the thallus, it's like a little leafy part, and leafy lichens are called folios. But it also has asexual reproductive feature around the edge. It's like this little white powdery stuff. And that's actually um, part of the fungus, the hyphae. And each piece of hyphae is wrapped around a little piece of green algae or cyanobacteria. And then that little feature will burst open and those little bundles will come out and start new lichens. So this was really interesting. I didn't look up and see what kind of uh, lichen it was, but I was just looking at the different parts today. And then the other lichen, I didn't look that one up either, but I drew it. I noted that it was a crustose lichen. It was like a green crust growing on the rock. And it's so tightly affixed to the rock, they call it oppressed that you really can't get it off. If you started scraping to get it off, it would probably just wreck it. But it did have some little features and these little features are places where spores are made. So that was interesting. And then I looked at my mullein leaf under the uh, microscope and it's very, very fuzzy. One of the common names for this is bunny ears, and it just begs to be petted. Some other common names for the mullein plant is flannel plant or velvet plant. I had found this over by the garage when I was walking in from my little short adventure today because it started getting windy and raining and I thought the storm was coming. This plant is native to Europe and has many 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 herbal and human uses. Everything from bandages to candle wicks. The little rosette by the garage is how it grows the first year. The second year goes very tall like six to eight feet tall. And another name for this plant is Jacob's Staff. It's very pretty, has yellow flowers, and it was grown by Monet in his garden. That's an interesting fact about it. But back to the fuzzy part, the younger leaves, the smaller ones, looked even fuzzier than the, the older leaf. So the younger leaves had these black spots along the edge. I, weren't, I wasn't quite sure what they were. So that's my question of the day. What are the black spots? The older leaf didn't have them. And the hairs on a leaf can be a protective feature. The hairs can protect the leaf from, say, insects eating it or maybe even larger animals grazing on it. But it's quite a pretty plant. Then I was in the kitchen at lunchtime and I just happened to look out the kitchen window and I saw a flash of black and white. 
between the trees in the woods. And I grabbed my binoculars very quick and tried to catch a good view of it, but it was moving around so fast it was really hard. And then it flew down to the ground, but it was behind the big wood pile. And then I caught a quick glimpse of a red head. And I said, ah, there's my pileated woodpecker. And this is the woodpecker that maybe made this nest in the tree I saw two days ago when I had found all those shavings on the ground. But I was so happy to catch a glance of it. So even though my walk was cut short today, I had some interesting finds with my lichens and fun painting my mullen leaf and doing a little research on the mullen. There's so many uses for this, you can write a whole book. But one good book to look up different plants and their uses is this Native American Ethnobotany book. It's very, very large. It's very comprehensive. It lists all the herbal uses and other kinds of uses of plants, like fiber and musical instruments. Uh, by scientific name and by Native American tribe. Very comprehensive. Food, teas, all the different uses of the different plants and how many different ways it was used by all the different tribes. Quite interesting to look up plants in here. Good book to have. Thanks for coming along nature journaling with me today. Bye bye.